What I want to talk about tonight, uh, um, conditions of Yahweh, is concerning being one. Being one with our ark, our hope, one in Yahshua HaMashiach, and one in Yahweh. There are many people that want to segregate or want to divide Almighty Yahweh and the Son Yahshua HaMashiach. But you cannot because they are one. They want to divide the house of Israel, yeah. the elect of Almighty Yahweh, his Zerah, his bang, his children. But he cannot. Why? Because we are one. And it's been called a mystery, something that is hard for us to understand, as long as we think in this mind of the flesh. Because how can two become as one? But all things are possible and are able through Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. If you would, let us turn to uh, Tehillim, chapter 12, verse 2. And what I want to do tonight is to take my time, Yisrael, and just lay a foundation. And what I have for store for us is not really a nugget, but just a little truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. As I define one as being a singular number, ikhat, one, it can be explained as a single person, a single nation, which is a multitude of people as one nation, or it can even be, um, if I may say, two. More than one. It don't, it, don't, it don't necessarily have to mean just one, yeah. but it could be a multitude of just one. Yeah, right. Our minds, Israel, even though we're scattered in the physical sense, we should not be scattered. Our minds should not be here and there, Israel. We should have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach did all that was commanded of him by the Abba. So was me, we as Israel do everything that is commanded of us, not only by Abba Yahweh, but through Yahshua HaMashiach, the Torah, the word, Israel. So it speaks here in Helium, chapter 12, verse 2. And what I found in this verse as I did this study, Israel, it can also be translated or mean an ish or a man. Or a multitude of men. So, if I may explain this to us, it's more than just a sin of, of singular aspect, Israel. But it says, they speak vanity, every one, it says. Every ish. Every man. With this neighbor. Don't we see that, Israel? Even amongst the house of Israel. Even when you see it in the going or this these nations, even now what we call the politics of the United States of America, you see the men, which should be somewhat the leaders of that nation. They are the leaders of the nation. But they speak, everyone to his neighbor, with flattering lips. Basically, lies. We have seen those in the house of Israel. We have had the op of those men that said that they would stand, that they would be a strength to the house. And what we found was they were just men, empty, with just flattering lips. Let us not be a people that are empty, Israel, that we use our lips to flatter Almighty Yahweh. So it says with flattering lips, and not only that, with a double heart. Should our heart be doubled, Israel? Should we not only just have one heart? There should only be one mind. One Abba, one Ru'ah, should not it be Israel? We should not be divided as a house. But we should be as Ekad one. As Yahshua HaMashiach is one with Abba Yahweh. And I will get into that. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. And we have seen that, Israel. We have seen it amongst the house of Israel. We see it in what we call the political uh, leaders of this day. They speak with a forked tongue, with double heart. The scripture says that a man that is not walking in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, 
that he is not stable. He is not stable. You cannot be stable if you're not walking in the Torah of Yahweh. You speak to other one, but yet behind their back you have a dagger waiting for them. That's being one that has a double mind, a dual intent to deceive Israel. Hallelujah. Let us move on unto the song of Solomon. Hallelujah. Chapter 6, verse 6. And this is speaking about this precious one that was near unto his heart. Even though he experienced many, yet there was one. Just one in particular. Even though there are many, many people, there are nations, there's only one in particular that Almighty Yahweh's heart is set upon. There's only one in particular, particular that Yahshua HaMashiach is indebted to. Just one. One nation. One house. One people. Ikha. Even though we are many individually, yet in Yahshua HaMashiach, we are one. He is coming back for an abundance of fruit, but only one kind of fruit. Israel. But he says here that your teeth are as a flock of sheep. Which go up from the washing, clean, glistering, beautiful, shiny. Whereof everyone bears twins. They are fruitful. And there is not one that is barren. Not one that is bearing among them. Do we know how many sheep or how many sheep are in the fold of Almighty Yahweh? Numerically, we do not know. But yet, we are in one fold, one body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there will not be one of us that shall not bear the fruits of Almighty God. There should not be one of us that should not have the twin. What is that twin? It's the same mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Walking in the Torah of the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 7, he says... As a piece of pomegranate are your temples within your locks. There are 70 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number. But it says here in verse 9, my dove, my undefiled, but is what? Ekhat. This is talking about the assembly of Almighty Yahweh, being equal. The only one, Yisrael. The only one. There is no other. Yahshua is not going to settle for two wives, not three. He only has one. And what you find is a nation that have slept in the bed with every spirit, with every doctrine, and you have a multitude of mindset. A multitude of habits amongst the house of Israel, where it should only be Echa, one. And that oneness is in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And it says that the daughters saw her, the nations, the others saw her, and blessed her. Yes, the queens and the concubines, and they did praise her. Even though we may not see it at this time, Yisrael, there's a time that this daughter, this house, this special one unto the heart of Almighty Yahweh shall be lifted up. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach lifted up? Was not he magnified by the power of Almighty Yahweh? Yet many did not know who he was at the time, but yet he has his appointed time where he was exalted or lifted up. We have our time, Israel. Right Don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let them trick your mind. Don't let the little fragments of the world draw us from what Yahweh has in store for us, Israel. Right because his riches and his wealth is given only to Ikad, one. 
one house, one nation, one people, Israel. We should be one. To our whole, our, our, we should be one. Our ish and our isha, we should be as one. There should not be two minds in your house. There should only be one mind. And what the ish, uh, you wives should do, is follow the mindset of your ish. And the ish follows the mindset of Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach comes directly from Abba Yahweh. Why? Because Yahshua is the Torah. The Torah made flesh. So what mind should we be of our? The mind of Yahshua. And what mind should you uh, walk in? Your Isha. You should walk in the mind of your husband. There's no other way around it. Did not Yahshua give his life, his very life, for his Isha? For that special one? That blackberry? That precious thing? Well, we should give our lives, Yisrael. For Almighty Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach. Moving on, Yisrael, let us move on into... Uh, Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, I, be, I want to begin reading. As I'm laying this out, foundation, I don't plan to be long tonight, but I want to establish this small, simple truth, which is of great wealth. Because what is small, what Yahweh gives us small, is more than all the riches of the world. Israel, hallelujah. So let us grasp hold to this tonight. Hallelujah. We should be Ekad, one, and Yahshua, Hamashiach, and, and Abba Yahweh. In the beginning, Yahweh created the Shemayims and the Olam. And the earth being without form. Were we not without form? Void Yisrael. And empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the rock of Yahweh moved over the surface of the waters. And Yahweh said, let there be light. Let there be light among this darkened place. Let there be light in this void Space. Let there be light. Yes. Yes. And there was light. And Yahweh saw the light, that it was excellent, that it was tough, it was perfect. And Yahweh divided the light from the darkness. Should we be a people that dwell in darkness, Israel? No, we should not. We should dwell in the light and the understanding of Yahweh. Yes. Because when you walk in darkness, you don't know where you're going. Your sense of direction is lost in complete darkness. I've, I've done this as a child. In a bedroom, turn the lights off, and you try to walk into the direction that you think you're going and end up somewhere totally different. And if it's dark enough, it's, it's hard to find the lights, which you have to feel your way around, would you not? Hallelujah. So we should not be in darkness, but in light. And Yahweh called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Yahweh said, let there be a firmament between the waters. Let there be a divided space. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And Yahweh made the firmament, or the Shemayims, and divided the waters which was under the Shemayims, the firmament, for the waters that was above the firmament. And it was so, Yisrael. And Yahweh called the firmament Shemayim heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And Yahweh said, let the waters under the Shemayims be gathered together into, what, it is, what does it say? One place. The waters and the Shemayims being divided, I mean, being gathered together into one place. Not many places. It said one place. Sure, the nations are troubled. The house of Israel, we're troubled and at war, but we should all be in one place. There's only one place that we can abide in where there is shelter. There's only one place we can abide in and we must abide. We must stay in that place where there is safety. There's no safety in this world. There's no safety in the armaments of man, and the wicked devices of man. There's only one place. And Yahweh has set this place in Yahshua HaMashiach. He has set that place in his Torah, his word. That's where we should abide, Israel. We're not the waters 
divided and it was always set in one place, a specific place, then why are we scattered about? Why are our minds scattered about, Yisrael? Why are we so troubled in these last and evil days? Our lives should not be troubled. Don't we hope in the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach? So we should not be scattered, Yisrael. We should be gathered. He said, let the dry land appear. And it was so. And Yahweh called the dry land, O Lamb, earth. And he called the gathering together of the waters. He called them seas. Yes. And Yahweh saw that it was excellent. A perfect setting. A perfect place. Yahweh knew where he wanted the waters. He knew where he wanted the earth. All in what he commanded in one place, Israel. We should only be in one place, Israel. Not everywhere, just one place. A place of ekah, a place of gathering together as we join in this mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Moving on. Yokohana chapter 10, verse 1. Hallelujah. Concerning a sheepfold, when we look at the sheep that we have here, do we really know exactly? Do we know anyone in here know exactly how many sheep we have to the T? But you can look among like a small flock of ours and kind of guesstimate what we have. But no matter whether there's just two or whether there's 300, it's a fold. It's a fold. Even though the sheep may be, have multiple colors, and our sheep have multiple, multiple colors, patterns. Yes, yes, no doubt about but yet, they all think the same. They all act the same. Yes. If you ever chase a group of sheep, mm -hmm. trying to catch them, when they perceive that they're going through a, a, a passageway, or if one jump, everyone behind that one will do the same thing. You put a bucket of wheat or grain or some corn, all that sh one sheep, that's, it just takes one. Right. And before you know it, the whole flock is in the same mindset. That should be the house of Israel, yes. an example of the house. Yes. Though we are sheep, mm -hmm. though our colors may vary, mm -hmm. but yet our minds should be the same. Yes. Yeah. No matter where we are in the fold, we should be ikad Israel. Yes. But one element that is very important for the sheep, for their livelihood, that they may survive, they must have a shepherd. Must have a shepherd. And not just any shepherd, but a true shepherd, a tough shepherd. Yahshua HaMashiach, isn't he our tough shepherd? Doesn't he lead us beside the still waters? Doesn't he lead us into a place of grazing where we can be nourished as a people? Hallelujah. Not only that, he set, up, he set man to be a shepherd to his people, to feed his sheep. Hallelujah. Did he not say, Kepha, if you love me to feed my sheep, to lead them, to guide them, not in a multitude of places and separating them, but all in one place. There are certain nations that they're sheep herders. Mm -hmm. And there's a specific place where they keep the sheep. Sure. You may have two or three flock or two or three folds in one combination. But yet, when the shepherd of that specific flock or fold comes, mm -hmm. those sheep know the voice of that shepherd. Yeah. And they will come out of that group of sheep. The next shepherd comes. He calls. They know the sound of his voice. Do we know the sound of the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach? Or are we so used to hearing the voice of the world? The voice of our lusts? The voice of our desires and our aspirations and not hearing the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Torah says that the sheep would hear the voice of the shepherd. And a stranger they would not follow. Then why are we following such strange things, Yisrael? Just like a whore will go after every man. And they do. It doesn't matter what kind of man, what size he is, how tall he is. And we have done that as a nation of people. 
We have gone after every doctrine. We sought after every word but the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And even the judgment of Yahweh has even fallen upon the nation. Let me move on. Yochanan chapter 10 verse 1. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, he that enters in not by the door into the sheepfold. How we entered in? Do we enter in by the Dhamma Yahshua? Do we enter in for the fish and the loaves, Israel? What is our purpose in this life that we live? Is it because of our wives or our husbands? Because of our children? Or is it because of the election of Almighty Yahweh? Truly, truly, I say to you, he that enters in, not by the door, into the sheepfold, into the bayad of Almighty Yahweh, but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. We have thieves and robbers in the body of Almighty Yahweh, and it should not be so. We have those that sought to enter in other ways into this sheepfold, but through the Dhamma Yahshua, through the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 2, but he that enters in by the door, there's one that enters in by the door, Yisrael, but he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You have those that call themselves pastors. Zakane, they call themselves elders, even prophets. That have entered into the sheepfold. And they're not of Almighty Yahweh. These men are thieves and they are robbers, Israel. Yes, they are. What does the enemy do? What does Satan come to do? Yes. To devour us? Yes. To steal, to take? Yes. Is he not a robber? Yes. Have we allowed him to come into the fold, Israel? Yes. Have we opened the gates? Have we not listened to the voice of Almighty Yahweh, but to the voice of Satan? But what is the voice of Satan? The voice of Satan is anything that is not of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That is not of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. No matter what name, shape, or form of religion it comes in. That way will lead you unto death and destruction and separate you from Almighty Yahweh. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. I want to skip a little bit, go to Chronicles. You don't have to turn in it, just a few verses. Debrim, 2nd Debrim, chapter 1, verse 9. Concerning Dawi, he says, Oh, Yahweh, my Abba, let your promise to Dawi, my, uh, my father, be established, he says. For you have made me the king over a people. Did not Yahweh make Yahshua our king? Should not he be our king, Israel? Was not he questioned on that point? Was he the leader? Was he the king of, of, of Israel? Like the dust of the earth in multitude, an unnumerable amount. He says in verse 10, give me now wisdom and knowledge. Why? Why did he desire wisdom and knowledge? We as Ak and even you a hope. We should desire the wisdom and the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because there's a purpose. Because if you enter into the sheepfold any other way, it's not going to work. Hallelujah. He said, give me now wisdom and knowledge. This is Solomon. He says, that I may go. Go where? Out and come in before his people. To come out and in before the flock, before the, the herd of the sheep. See, he didn't want to rob the people of Almighty Yahweh. He knew that he would be placed in a position of power, of great responsibility. And he had enough of the hava of Almighty Yahweh not to ask for riches or gold or land. But he wanted the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge to go in and out of the fold. How he's going to lead the flock. How he's going to lead the people. How he's going to lead the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. And we need that as being ark of Almighty Yahweh. He said, for who can judge this your people? That is so great. So great a nation. So he must have the wisdom. We must have the wisdom of being men. As being Adam. We must have the wisdom to lead the house of Israel. Not down a crooked path, 
Not down a broad way, but the straight and narrow way. The tour of Almighty Yahweh. Do we pray that, Israel? Y'all? Do we ask of the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh? Or do we enter, we try to enter in some other way? Then you're a thief and a robber. We've had those that stole from Israel, y'all, that take the Muna. They steal from the strength, from the joy of the conditions of Almighty Yahweh because they had entered in some other way and not through the way of Yahshua, not through the Torah. Getting back to Yochanan 10, verse 3. He says, to him, the porter opens, the doorkeeper, and the sheep hear his voice. Did I not talk about the sheep hearing the voice? And he calls to his own sheep by name. Do you know that Almighty Yahweh calls us by name? Don't you know that when Yahshua HaMashiach was on that state, the 12 Almighty Yahweh, don't you know he knew each of you here today by name? He's calling your name, Israel. Hallelujah. Do you hear the voice, the 12 Yahweh calling you? Hallelujah. Well, all you have to do is obey. But the only way we're going to obey as being a nation, a flock, we must, be, we must become Ikar. There's no other way. We must become one. We must come out of the world, Israel. We must come out of this worldly mindset and have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Well, how do we get this mind? You don't get this mind by, by uh, if I may say, just studying the Torah. Because you have men that are very fluent in Scripture, but they don't have the Ruach of Yahweh. See, we have been grafted in conditions of Yahweh unto this, this branch, Yahshua HaMashiach. There's a zero. It's not every man is not, a, not called of Yahweh. But there is a zero. There is a people, a Pacific people. Well, how do I know that I am that Pacific person? When your whole desire, heart, mind, body, your every movement is to please him. To be of the one mind. Yeah. To have one heart. One imuna. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. To him the porter opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name mm -hmm. and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. Sure before them. Didn't Yeshua HaMashiach go before us, Israel? Yeah. Did he not show us the way? Yeah. The stake? Don't you know we must all face that state? We must all go down the same path. When you, even when you watch the sheep, even though our sheep here don't have a Pacific herder, yet there'll be one out of that flock that will be the head. And it will lead the flock, whether it's a, a ram or, or whatever one. When it's time to feed, usually it's just one of the oldest, one of the oldest of the sheep. They know what time to go. So they will head to that, fi that place, that pasture to feast, to eat. And you'll see, you'll find that the flock will follow. The young ones, the older ones, they stick together, Yisrael, in one fold. They're all as one. And one goes before them. Yahshua has gone before us, Yisrael. He has showed us the way. He has showed us the hardships that we must suffer. He has been an example unto us, Yisrael. And the sheep follow him. We should follow him as being sheep. For they know his voice. The voice of Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we think of his voice as being this sweet, subtle, rubbing voice that comforts us? Sure, it does that. But also, it's the judgment. Sometimes it's the things that are not so comforting for the moment. But yet, it's to guide us back into the way. To bring us back into the fold. Because sometimes what happens when the sheep, when they're eating and they're not confined in a place, they may be one or two to go out of the sheep fold. Well, what happens to that sheep? Well, the shepherd goes, fetch that sheep, bring it into the sheep fold again. That same sheep goes out. The shepherd, he goes again. No, haven't y'all sure how much he had time and time again had to call us back, Israel? But he that is often reproved, the scripture says he stiffened his neck. Well, what does the shepherd do? Well, the shepherd had to go after that same sheep or lamb again. He breaks the legs. It's going to take the scourging on the house of Israel. It's going to take Yahweh breaking the legs. 
that we'll stop wandering around going this place and that place everywhere but down the Dabar, down the way, down the direct, the path. Following the leader. Staying in the beaten path. When you watch the sheep, when they're going from one place to the other, usually there's a path that is beaten that all of them veer into. They all fall into that one path, even though they're scattered. They might be scattered grazing. But when you look, there's always a bare path that you can see. It is clear. There's no grass there. There's no reason that we should lose our way, Israel. Because Yahshua HaMashiach, he has laid that path, that direct, in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And it says in verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. What does it say? Did it say they will flee from him? The stranger? The enemy? The one that is seeking our souls? That is trying to pounce upon us? He's at the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? That's the stranger, Israel. Do we run from that? Do we run from the danger? For there is a danger. Death lies at the door. Darkness lies there. Separation from Almighty Yahweh lies there. But still, still we veer that way, Israel. Why? Because we're not of the oneness of mind. Getting back to the shepherd that broke the legs of the lamb or the sheep. He carries it. He binds up the wounds. He binds up the legs that they may heal. But that sheep is with him day by day. Why? Why do you think that sheep is with us, with him? Why do you think it is important that we always walk in the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach? Why? That we may become Ekar. See, that time that the lamb is with the shepherd, that lamb becomes Ekar. He becomes one. That he will not veer out of the fold again. As a matter of fact, he will stick closer to the shepherd than the rest of the sheep. Hallelujah. Let us abide by the Torah of Yahweh. I remember the old song that says, draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Yahweh. Unto the state where Yahshua HaMashiach shed his dawn. That should draw us near. See, Yahshua HaMashiach, he took the blunt of all of our sins upon his body. He was beaten. He took that for us, Yisrael. Why would we, why would we not lay down our lives? Why would we not want to follow the shepherd? That leads us into paths of righteousness. That leads us into the places where we could graze. But you know, Yahweh has placed a shepherd over this by it. Those of you, those of you that are listening, Yahweh has placed a shepherd. Well, who is that shepherd? Who is that one? That shepherd is Yahshua HaMashiach. We should be of like mind, Yisrael. We should allow the rock of Yahshua HaMashiach to lead us in all things. Let me, let me move on. Hallelujah. I don't want to. I mean, there's just so much in being Ecod 1. It's found over 5,000 times in Torah and even in the lost books on the search. So it has, it has to be very important. But we can't divide it as being just a singular, even though it's a singular, but it's a multitude, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Would I leave off? Verse 5. And the stranger will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of this stranger. This parable spoke Yahshua unto them in verse 6, but they understood not the things that were which he had spoke to them. Yeah. Then said Yahshua to them again, Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the fold. I am the one that opens unto Almighty Yahweh. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. He did not open unto those that were thieves and robbers. Then Yahshua says, I am the door. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach is the door unto the sheepfold? He is the way unto the gathering of Almighty Yahweh. He said, by me, if any man will enter in, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. But we must enter in through Yahshua HaMashiach. Not trying to come into the fold any other way, but through Yahshua, the Torah of Almighty Yah. Yes, yes. And shall go in and out. Did not Solomon, did not he desire yes. to go in and out for wisdom, mm -hmm. understanding that he would know how to lead the people of Almighty Yahweh? 
verse 10. He said, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he said, I have come that day. Who is the day? Might have life. That they might have life. Light. That they might have it, not only have this life, but to have it more in abundance. Do we desire that, Israel? Yes, right, yeah. yeah. Not only to live, but we should desire the abundant life. Yeah. We've all, we are alive as being here presently, but not only desiring the health in this present state, but the abundant life. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. The life beyond what we see with these physical eyes, Israel. Right, yeah. Verse 11. He said, I am the tough shepherd. The tough shepherd gives his life for the sheep. If we are, cannot give our life for the sheep, we cannot give our, our, our lives um, up for our wives. And what is that? What is that? It's basically really taking hold of your house, having the instruction of the Torah in your house. You laid down your life to lead them in the path of righteousness. Sometimes you may have the Break a leg there or here. Hallelujah. But that is all part of the process. He says the tough shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep or not, sees the wolf coming. Yes. You tell me us as being men, Ark, that we see harm or hurt coming to the house of Baal of Israel unto our Israel, and we do not warn them. You're not even a man if you cannot warn your Isha of the dangers. We're not even men as being shepherd, those that lead the house of Israel, and we cannot warn the house of the dangers, of the wolf, of this lion. He said the wolf coming and leaves the sheep. He flees for his own life. That's a coward. That's cowardice there. That the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. He said, the hireling flee because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. Do we care for the sheep? Uh, did not Yahshua ask Kephah more than once to feed his sheep, to care for his sheep? He said, I am the tough shepherd. He said, I know my sheep and am known of mine. He said, I know my sheep, and my sheep, they are known of me. He said, as the Abba knows me, now this is what we're getting into, the oneness in Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, as the Abba knows me, was not Yahweh Almighty Yahweh, did he not lead Yahshua HaMashiach? Was not he his shepherd? Did he not lead him in every path, in every way that he must go? He said, even so I, the Abba, I laid down my life before the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and there shall be one fold even though we're scattered and divided as a house Yahweh through Yahshua HaMashiach the Torah of the word is going to bring us all together again into one fold Yisrael and what does it say and one what? Yeah. One shepherd. Ecod. One. One shepherd. Wouldn't it be, you know, it's a mess. It, it, wouldn't it be a mess? You imagine this. Two or three shepherds to one flock or to one herd. The, the, the sheep would be confused. Yes. They would not know which one to follow. That's why it's so important that we become Ecod in Yahshua HaMashiach. For he is the tough shepherd, Yisrael, and we should all follow him. He is the leader of Yisrael, of the sheepfold. Verse 18. He said, no man, verse 17, therefore, does my Abba, he said, he loves me. He ahavas me. He takes care of me. He know what I need. Because I lay down my life. Do we lay down our life, Yisrael? Don't you know we lay down our lives? That Yahweh, he knows what is best for us. He knows what we're in need of. Is it his eye upon the Shapora, upon the little bird? Or don't you know he watches us, Yisrael? 
Don't you know that we are of great wealth and worth unto Almighty Yahweh? Because I laid down my life that I might take it again. He said, no man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. He said, I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. He said, this commandment have I received of my Abba. Wow, can we do that, Israel? Can we take up our life for Yahshua HaMashiach and then give it up, lay it down? Can we take up our life for our art and for our hope? But can we lay it down, Israel, for one another? Hallelujah. You know, that is how we know that we are of Almighty Yahweh. If we have this kind of ahava one to another, Yisrael. He said, there is a division, therefore, again among the Yehudim, for these sayings. And many of them said, he has a devil. He is mad. Why hear you him? Others said, these are not the words of him that is a devil. He said, can a devil open the eyes of the blind? There was questioning the the validity of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And, it was, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was the winter time. Yeah. And Yahshua, he walked in the great tabernacle of Solomon's porch. Then came the Yehudim round about him and said to him, How long do you make us doubt? Why did they doubt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was Yahshua making them doubt? No, it's because they were not walking in the oneness of the mind. See, anytime you are at doubt, after you have been instructed by the, by the Zakan of Almighty Yahweh, after you have been instructed by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it's because you're not one in Yahshua HaMashiach. You're not of the one mind, Yisrael. Then came the Yehuda round about him and said to him, How long do you make us doubt? If you be Messiah, tell us plainly. If he told them plainly, they would have still doubted, Yisrael. Yahshua answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Abba's name, he said, they're bearing witness of me. Are we confusing this hour of who the true shepherd is, who the tough shepherd, Yisrael? Don't you know that his work bear witness? Don't you know that our works, Yisrael, bear witness of us, whether we are in the fold or not, whether we are the conditions of Yahweh? Our actions speak louder than our flattering words, Yisrael. Yahweh, he doesn't want lip service from Israel. Yeah. He wants the action. Yeah. And then when you're in the oneness of the mind, and then the, the lip service or the praises, yeah. the accolades unto Almighty Yahweh will be a sweet-smelling savor unto his nostrils. Yeah. Verse 27. He said, my sheep hear my voice. What was Yahshua saying? He said, yeah, you don't understand, but my sheep, they understand because they're of the one mind. Because they follow the Torah, because they follow me, and they follow me closely. He said, I know them, and they follow me. He said, I give them eternal life. Eternal life. He gives it unto us, Yisrael, freely. It's nothing you had to pay for. It's nothing that you had to work for. It was all inherited. Hallelujah. And they never perish. The foe never perishes. If you follow the tough shepherd, Yahshua HaMashiach, we will never perish. We will never lack. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. What are we afraid of, Yisrael? The world cannot pluck us out. The enemy, he can roar all he want to. You can have the wolves sneak in. The little foxes try to destroy the vine, but it's not going to be so. Verse 29. He said, my Abba, which gave them to me, he said he is greater than all. Do we believe that, Israel? That Almighty Yahweh is greater than our circumstances, greater than our troubles, greater than our problems. Hallelujah. Let us follow Yahshua HaMashiach. He has laid the way. He has laid the path out plainly, Israel. There's no stumbling blocks in that path. There's no deception in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Continue in verse 29. He says, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Abba's hand. Verse 30. He said, I and my Abba. What does it say there in verse 30? Are Eka. We are Eka. We are one. 
We cannot be separated. You cannot separate the Torah from Yahweh. You cannot separate Yahshua HaMashiach from Abba Yahweh. And don't you know a beautiful thing, Israel? That not only can the Torah of Yahweh, there's no way it can be separated from Abba, Abba Yahweh, but there's no way that we can be separated from the Torah of Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. There's no way. And I will get to that, Israel. Hallelujah. Still in Yachahana, turn to chapter 13, verse 31. I want to continue with this. Hallelujah. Being Ekad. Being Ekad, Yisraya. Before I go there, before we read that, Yisraya, while we're talking about the oneness and talking about the wives, the husband, the Ish and the Isha, it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, concerning being one. He said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as to Almighty Yahweh. That sounds like a tough one there, doesn't it? Submitting, it should not be. It should be easy. You should submit unto your head, just as Yahshua HaMashiach submitted unto Abba Yahweh. He said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahshua Messiah is the head of the congregation or the head of the foe. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the congregation is subject to Yahshua Messiah, so let the wives, the Isha, be to their own husband and everything. We as the house of Israel, we should be subject, we should be submitted unto Abba Yahweh in all things. Yes, yes. Therefore, as the congregation is subject to Messiah, so let the wives be to their own husband in some things. In some things, just what you want to do. And everything, everything. We should obey what Yahshua has commanded us. Everything down to the letter. Being led by the Ruah. Everything. Not some things, but everything. And to the Ark, ah, to the Ish. Husband, love your wives, even as Yahshua Messiah also loved the congregation. How did he hover us? What did he do for the sheepfold, Israel? What did he do? He laid down his life. He freely, he had the power to lay down his life, Yisrael. Verse 26. That he, might be, that he might be Kodesh and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Torah. We are cleansed by the washing of the water, Yisrael, by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That he might present it to himself a splendid congregation, a splendid people, a splendid foe, a splendid bride. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be Kodesh and without blemish. Yes. So ought men love their wives as their own bodies. Why is that so? Don't you know, Ak, that you are one with your Isha? Yes. Yes. That you're made one? Just as Yahshua HaMashiach is one with the Abba. And not only that, but just as the sheepfold is one with Yahshua HaMashiach, the tough shepherd. Verse 29. He said, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, not a man, not one that walks after the Torah of Yahweh, that Ahava his Isha, but nourishes it and cherishes it. Even as Yahshua HaMashiach, the, what does it say? The congregation, the foe. He said, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. I don't think there's no other way to explain the closeness or the oneness that we have in Yahshua HaMashiach. We are one in him, Yisraya. No, not three, not four, not five. Eka. Eka. Just one. He says in verse 31, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined. Were we not joined? Are we not joined? By the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. And shall be joined to his Isha, his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. He said, this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Messiah Yahshua and the congregation of the sheepfold. Israel. Isn't that beautiful? 
Isn't that tough to know that we're one? One in the Ruach. We are one in the Amunah. Hallelujah of Almighty Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that he reverence her husband. Do we reverence our husband? Do we reverence our head, Yahshua HaMashiach? Don't you know that we are one? One with him, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yes, we are one. Hallelujah. In Yahshua HaMashiach. Therefore, Yachanan chapter 13, verse 31. Therefore, when he was gone out, Yahshua said, Now is the Son of Man magnified and honored. And Yahweh is magnified and honored in him. This is concerning when Yahshua HaMashiach, when he left the Olim. But he did not leave us comfortless, Yisrael. But he said that he would send the comfort, the Ruah. Hallelujah. He said, if Yahweh be magnified and honored in him, Yahweh also shall be magnified and honored in him in himself. Why is that? Is it hard to understand? That the honor that is in the son, Yahshua HaMashiach, the, the word, it's the same honor, Yisrael. Yahshua HaMashiach, did he not please the Abba? Did not um, Abba Yahweh say that he was pleased? And his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. And shall straight away magnify and honor him. Verse 33. He says, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said to the Yehudim, where I go, you cannot come. So, so now I say unto you, a new commandment I give to you, that you ahava one another. Ahava one another. That each and every one love each and every one. And loving the total assembly, the bite of Abba Yahweh. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. He said, by this, by what? The love that we have. The sincerity that we have. That we don't tell lies one unto another. That we don't be flatterers, thieves or robbers one of another. He said, by this Ahava shall all men know that you are my disciplined ones, my disciples, if you have Ahava one to another. And Simon Kepha, he, he spoke up in verse 36. Simon Kepha said to him, Rabbi, teacher, master, where do you go? Where go you? And Yahshua answered unto him, where I go, you cannot follow me now. You cannot go this path now. It's not time for you to go this way, but yet there is a path. Did I not talk about the path that the shepherd makes for the sheep? So there's a path that we must follow, Israel. It's a straight and a narrow path. He said, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. There's a time coming where you will come this way. We will be with me. And Kepha said to him, Yahshua, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And Yahshua answered to him, he said, will you lay down your life for my sake? Will we lay down our lives for Yahshua's sake? For the work's sake? He said, will you lay down my life, your life for my sake? He says, truly, truly, I say to you, the cock shall not crow until you have denied me thrice. Yes, yes. Why did he say that unto Kepha? Yes. Because he knew as being Kepha's shepherd, mm -hmm. one that led him, that he was not ready mm -hmm. yes. at this time. Yes. Yeah. He was not ready. Are we ready, Israel? Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. To father this path. Kephar was not ready at this time. See, Yahshua HaMashiach had not yet gone unto the stake. So it took Yahshua going to the stake and Kephar seeing that. That he may understand truly what it takes to enter in, Yisrael. We must understand what it takes to enter in. 
and to the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. The same, cha- the same book, Yachanan, chapter 16, verse 19, as I continue. Hallelujah. Bear with me, Israel, y'all. We must be as one mind, being one with Yahshua HaMashiach. Now, Yahshua knew that they were... Now, Yahshua knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said to him, Do you inquire amongst yourself of what I said, yet a little while, and you shall not see me? But again, a little while, you shall see me. Truly, truly, I say to you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful. See, he meant for Kephah to go through those feelings and those experiences. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy, Israel. He said, as a woman, a woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow. Because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And you know wherefore, and you now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man takes from you. So even though we may tread that same path, we may, we're going to face sorrows, Israel, y'all. hardships. But yet, we should, are going to forget all those sorrows, those days of tribulation, the days of trying. Why? Because of the joy. As we shall see Yahshua HaMashiach face to face. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatsoever you seek the Abba in my name, he will give it to you. What are we seeking? Possessions, houses, land, cars. Are those the things that he promised unto us, Israel? No, it should be the amuna, faith, understanding, wisdom. If you ask that of Almighty Yahweh in Yahshua's name, he will not hold that from you, Israel. He did not hold it for Solomon. He said, hereunto have you asked nothing in my name. He said, ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be fulfilled. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the same comes. He said, when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of my Abba. This is talking about the oneness of mine, Israel. Did he not say that the sheep will hear his voice and a stranger he will not follow? He said, at that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not to you that I will pray the Abba for you. Yes. For the Abba himself, he ahavas you. How do we know that Almighty Yahweh ahavas us, Yisrael? Because of the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, because you have ahavas me, I have believed that and, and have believed that I have come from Almighty Yahweh. Yes. He said, I come forth from the Abba. And I am come into the world again. He said, I leave the world and go to the Abba. He's saying, I come from Almighty Yahweh. I am the Torah spoken from the lips of Almighty Yahweh, and I have come into the world. But yet I have to go back. And he did go back, um, house of Israel, but his promise is that he will return again. Verse 29. His disciples said to him, Lo, now speak you plainly and speak no proverb. In verse 30. He said, now are we sure that you know all things and need not any man should ask you. But this we believe that you come from Almighty Yahweh. And Yahshua answered them, do you now believe? Do we truly believe, Yisrael? Yeah. Then now he asked, asked um, did he not ask the question, will you believe? Will you follow me? Will you lay down your life? Verse 32, behold, the hour comes, yes, it is now come. Don't you know that we're in that hour, Yisrael, right now, this hour that he is speaking, that you shall be scattered, diverse, every man to his own, 
That's a sad saying, Israel, y'all, but it is true yes. in this time. And shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone because the Abba is with me. We have all left Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, these words, okay, chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to the Shemaya and said, Abba, the hour is come. He said, magnify and honor your son, that your son also may be magnified and honor you. He said, honor your word, Yahweh. Honor what you have spoken, and you shall be honored, you shall be magnified. He said, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you. And on the only true Abba, yes, the only true Yahweh, yes. and Yahshua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. He said, I have magnified and honored you in the earth. I have finished the work which you have gave me to do. Did not Yahshua finish the work? Yes. Was it not testified in the Torah that he, it was finished, yes. complete, total? And now, O oh Abba, magnify and honor you, me, with your own self. With the splendor which I had with you before the world was. I have, magnif I have manifest your name in to the men which you have gave me out of the world. Don't you know we have, give we have been given unto Yahshua HaMashiach as being the sheep in this fold? He said, yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. They have kept your Torah. Are we keeping the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Have we kept the word of Almighty Yahweh? It said, now they know that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. He said, for I have given to them the words which you have gave to me. And they have received them. And have known surely that I have come from you. And they have believed that you did send me. He says, I pray for them. He said, I pray not for the world. He said, I don't pray for every man, but just for this house, just for this flock, this herd. But for them which you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine. Don't you know we belong unto Almighty Yahweh? And Yahshua HaMashiach, we are equal with Almighty Yah. He said, I am magnified and honored in them. In us, Yahshua is magnified and honored in us. He says then in verse 11, he says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Kodesh Abba, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be ikad, that we may be one. Keep us, almighty Yahweh. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, that we may be as one, Almighty Yah. He says that, and he says, as we are Eka, as we are. Verse 12, he said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept. And none of them was lost, but the son of perdition. That the scripture may be fulfilled. Verse 13. And now, and now come I to you. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Why was it important for us to have Yahshua's joy? Why? Because he had the joy of the Abba in him. It's all Eka, it's all one. We have the joy of Yahshua, we have the joy of the Abba. Yeah. Yahweh, he, he is honored in us as long as we honor him, Yisrael Yah. As we walk in the mind of Yahshua, verse 14. He said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. We are not of the world. We should not be like the Goyim or the nations that are around us. We are a peculiar people. We are a different kind of sheep. He said, even as I am not of the world, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, 
but that you would keep them from the evil, from the evil one, from the enemy. Those that try to enter into the, sh the fold, the sheepfold, out of other means, other ways, but through the Torah. Verse 16, he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Doesn't that show the oneness just right, y'all? We're not, we should not be of the world. We're not of the world. We're walking this singleness of mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, he says this in verse 17, Yachahana 17. He said, make them Kodesh through your truth, Yahweh. Your word is truth. He said, as you have sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. Don't you see the correlation, the example that Yahweh, that Yahshua is comparing about him and his Abba concerning us yeah. to him, that him being Yahshua HaMashiach, that we follow and please him in everything that we do. He said, and for their sake, and for their sakes, I make myself Kodesh, that they also might be made Kodesh through the truth. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also that shall believe on me through the Torah. He said, that they also may be one, as you, Abba, are in me, and I in you. Don't you know we're in Yahshua HaMashiach? Washed in the dom of the Lamb, that we are one in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael Yah. Don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let him trick you. Bring all kind of doubts into your mind. Don't let what this religious church world say detour us from this path of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because we are one in him. Did not Yahweh say he would do a new thing? That he would place the Torah in our lives, Yisrael Yah? Will not the Torah placed in the level of Yahshua HaMashiach? But well, we are Ekah. We are one in Yahshua HaMashiach. And that makes us one, Ekah, with Almighty Yahweh. He said, I in them, in verse 23, and you in me, that they might be made perfect in one, Ekah, that they might, that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as you have loved me. Abba, verse 24, he said, I will that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am. Yahshua is praying that we will be where he is, sitting at the right hand of the Abba. He desires that we will sit beside him as judges on the throne of the Melkut, of the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Does that set, excite your love, Israel, Yah? That there's a place. Yahshua, he even said that the places that are surrounding my Abba, I cannot give to you. But it's only in his power to give. Yet he know through this foreknowledge, the house of Israel, the sheepfold, as being one, that we shall sit beside him. Hallelujah. On the throne. I'm going to read that again, verse 24. Abba, I will that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my beauty, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the Olim. He said, O righteous Abba, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have I known that you have sent me. See, Yahshua HaMashiach, the word of Yahweh, the Torah, the Mitzvah, he's always known us by name, Israel Yah. Each and every one of us. Verse 26. He said, and I have declared to them your name. And I will declare it. That the Ahava, the love wherein you have loved me, may be in them. And I in them. As being Ekah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I bring this into a close, this way, y'all turn with me. Yokohana again. Chapter 18, verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Concerning Kepha. And Simon Kepha stood and warmed himself. This is concerning after he had denied, or in the time where he had denied Yahshua HaMashiach. 
And they said, therefore, to him, are not you also one? So even the people, those that were at this place, they singled Kephar out. Why? Because there was something about this person, even though he denied Yahshua HaMashiach, yet he was a chosen. He was one of those sheep that were led astray. And he had to um, renew him, bring him back into the sheepfold. But they knew him out of all the host of people that was there. He said, are not you one of those disciples? Are not we one of those? As Kepha, Yisrael, y'all. And he denied it and said, I am not. Verse 36 of the same chapter 18. Verse 36, Yisrael, y'all. Yahshua answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants, my house, my foe fight. And I should not be delivered unto the Yahudim. But he said, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Are you not the shepherd? Are you not the one? Yahshua answered, you say that I am a king. To this end was I born, this purpose. For this cause have I come into the world, that I shall bear witness of the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, he hears my voice. Do we hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh tonight? Do we hear the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach? And Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Yehudim and said to them, I find in him no fault at all. There was no fault that could be found in Yahshua HaMashiach. And there also shall be no fault that shall be found in the Kedushim if we walk in the oneness and the complete unity of Yahshua HaMashiach and Abba, our Abba, Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I want to move down to chapter 21, verse 25. Hallelujah. I tell you what, let's, I want, let's, let me move past that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. I want to read this passage. In one of the, the lost books here. Hallelujah. And in my... I did not get that... Um, this written down where exactly it is found, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm going to read this. It says, And him, the first word, they shall bless, extol, and honor with wisdom. But they shall be wise in utterance, and the ruah of life in Yahweh of hosts. He said, He placed the elect one on the throne of splendor. And he shall judge all the works of the Kodesh ones of the Shemayans above, weighing in the balance their deeds. And when he shall lift up his countenance in order to judge the secret ways of theirs by the word of the name of Yahweh of hosts and their conduct by the method of Siddiq or the righteous judgment of Almighty Yahweh of hosts, then they shall speak with one voice, blessing. Honor, extolling, magnifying the name of Yahweh of hosts. And he will summon all the forces of the Shemayim, to all the Kadesh ones above, and the forces of Almighty Yahweh, the Cherubim, Cherubim, Ophrim, and all the Melikim of the governance, the governance of Almighty Yahweh, and the elect one, and other forces on the earth and over the water. And that day should I lift up in one voice. In one voice. We should all be of one voice, Israel. Blessing and honor and extolling to the Ruah of Imuna, in the Ruah of wisdom and of patience, in the Ruah of mercy and the Ruah of justice and shalom, and in the Ruah of generosity. 
They shall all say in one voice, blessed is he, and may the name of Yahweh of hosts be blessed forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall be in that great assembly, Yisrael, on that great throne of Almighty Yahweh. As I bring this message to a close, Yisrael, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 6, as I bring this to a close. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. He said, I therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling wherewith you are called. What is that calling? Well, it's basically what this whole message was about, Yisrael. The calling of being one, being equal in Yahshua HaMashiach and Almighty Yahweh. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another again in Ahava, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Ruach and the bond of Shalom. Are we endeavoring? endeavoring? Are we working, Israel, to keep the unity of the Ruach and bond of Shalom? Verse 4. He says, there is one body and one Ruach, even as you are are called in one hope of your calling. Verse 5. He said there's one Messiah, one Yahshua, one faith, and there is only one way that we shall be baptized. Verse 6. One Abba, one Yahweh, of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, you conditions of Yahweh. I pray that this message has somewhat been an inspiration to you, live in. That Yahweh has placed something so precious in every one of us, and that is his Torah. That we will be one with him. Why? Because he is in us. The word is in us. Yahshua HaMashiach is in us. So what should we do as being a people and being in a nation? We should walk in the ikad of one mind. In the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet, Yisrael. But let's not forget those that have scattered the house, the flock of Yisrael throughout the old land. Even though we don't know, that many we do not know by name, Yisrael. But let us pray for the flock, for the house of Yisrael. Abba Yahweh, we do told you for another night that you have given us. On this night of emit of truth, Abba Yahweh. We do pray, Abba Yahweh, that we will all be of one mind, of one love, of one heart, in Yahshua HaMashiach. That we will have one another just as Yahshua HaMashiach has ahavered us. And in all things we do, Barak you, Abba Yahweh, we do pray for the house of Israel, those that are scattered throughout the four corners of the world, Abba Yahweh. For you have a sea, a zira, in every nation, in every place. Bring us all, Yahweh, together in one place, Yahweh. As you have brought Yahweh, your servant, Yahshua HaMashiach, to one place and one mind with you. And all things we do, Barak you. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do cry out. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh Barak you, conditions of Yah. Hallelujah.